Jerry at Fair Oaks. What does your father look like, Harold? Well, uh, well, gee, I don't know. I guess I've never been, I've been around him so much, I've never figured out exactly uh -huh. what he looks like. <laughs> well, I mean, is he tall or short, fat or thin or what? Well, he's about the same height as Captain Gardner, I guess, but a little huskier. What color hair has he got, Harold? About the same as mine, I guess. Maybe a little lighter. Well, uh, do you think you'll know him? Oh, sure. I just saw him a little over a week ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just kidding. Well, I bet you're glad you were taken off the restricted list before he got here, aren't you? Oh, gee, you bet. So am I, Harold. Say it was swell that Mrs. Gardner was able to find that little cottage for your dad. So close to the school, I mean. Uh-huh. Just think. Dad'll be living right across from Craig Field. Or I can go to see him all the time, every day during free periods. That is great, Harold. Oh, you aren't going to live with him, huh, Harold? Nope. In his last letter, Dad said he thought it was much better that I stayed right at the school. Of course, we'll be seeing a lot of each other anyway. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, here's the station. Oh, uh, this is all right, Kirk. Okay, Lee. We can walk over from here. Sure. Say, I just happen to think. I, I wonder if your dad will be able to walk yet. Oh, yeah, he can walk, but he'll still be using crutches, I guess. He said that he hoped he'd be off him when he got here, but maybe he wouldn't. Well, come on. The train ought to be here pretty soon. Thanks, Kirk. Okay, I'll wait here. All right. Gee, I'm beginning to get a little shaky. <laughs> say, this isn't any time to be getting that way. Well, I should say not, Harold. Just remember what a difference there is between this time and the last time we brought you down to the station. Yeah. Yeah, that time we didn't even know that Dad would would get better. That's right. Now you're going to have him right here with you in Fair Oaks for a long time. So you want a candy bar or something while we're waiting? Do you, Harold? Oh, I don't think so. I don't think I could eat it. Well, I don't think I want anything either, Lee. Thanks just the same. Hey, I wasn't going to treat you fellas. I just asked whether you wanted anything or not. <laughs> oh, I get it. Big-hearted Phillips, that's you. <laughs> well... Hey, look, coming around the bend down there. Yeah, that's it, Harold. Uh-huh, it's G. Uh, what are you going to say to your dad, Harold? Jerry, for the love of Mike. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, gee, this is a bigger train than the one you left on, Harold. Yeah, it is. See, I wonder where they get the names for the Pullman cars. <laughs> hey, there's a couple of men getting off down there, Harold. You see your dad? Let me see. Uh, no, I don't. Hey, look it. Is that your dad there? Oh, no, he's not using crutches or even a cane. Uh, wait, I think... Yeah, yeah, it's Dad. Dad, Dad, here I am. That guy Linwell's a swell-looking man, isn't he? Mm-hmm, sure is. Lee. Yeah? Isn't it great that he... Well, that he came out of that crash as well as he did? Yeah, it sure is. Oh, look, Carol's bringing him over here. Oh, uh, what do we say? Don't say anything. Just say, how do you do, or something. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's kind of swell that he only has to use one crutch now, isn't it? I should say it is. He walks pretty well. Mm -hmm. and so they brought me down here to meet you. Oh, Dad, these two boys are friends of mine. They're swell kids, Dad, and, well, well, this is Jerry Dugan. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Guy. I mean, <laughs> how do you do, <laughs> Mr. Linwell? <laughs> and uh, this is Jerry's roommate, Dad, Lee Phillips. Hello to you, too, Lee. How do you do, sir? You know, I think I'd have known you boys anywhere. Harold's told me so much about you in his letters that I feel we should be all be good friends already, don't you? <laughs> you <Yes>. bet. <laughs> oh, but there's one other member of this gang, isn't there? Oh, you must mean Tubby Young. Oh, that's right, Tubby. Yeah, but Tubby couldn't come with us today. He, well, he, 
He got some demerits. Yeah, Tubby's always getting demerits. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we get going? I'm uh, sort of anxious to see Fair Oaks Military Academy, Harold. You bet. Here's the station wagon over here, Dad. Is that all right? All right. It's perfect. I can sit in that second seat there and stretch this old right leg of mine right out full length. Is, uh... Well, is that the worst thing that happened to you, Mr. Linwell? Jerry! Oh, that's all right, Lee. <laughs> I don't mind talking about the crack-up now. It sort of relieves my mind once in a while. Yes, Jerry, they thought at first I had a concussion of the brain. That turned out to be gross exaggeration. Heavy eaters don't have brains. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, Dad. Uh, Dad, this is Kirk Prentice. Kirk drives the station wagon and the bus and runs the power plant, too. How do you do, Mr. Limbaugh? Hello, Hello, Kirk. Uh, can we help you, Mr. Limbaugh? No, no. Uh, I can make it all right. I can just get this old peg of mine. There. Uh, you're all right, Dad? Yeah, hey, you bet I am, son. I'm all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, get in the front seat, Jerry. Okay. Say, do you want to ride back there with your father, Harold? Uh-huh. Is it all right, Dad? All right. You bet it is. All in? Mm -hmm. Yep, Everybody I'm all set. In. All right. Here we go. Fair Oaks is a pretty little city, isn't it? Well, we think it is, Mr. Linwell. But you better not call it little in front of any of the people who live here. <laughs> no, I guess you're right, Lee. <laughs> oh, there's the city hall, Mr. Linwell. That tall building. Oh, yes? Nice building. Hey, hey Lee, uh, do you think we could stop at Mac? Uh, well... Who's Mac? Well, his name's William McLeod, Mr. Linwell. He runs a little ice cream store right across the street from the front gate of Fair Oaks. Oh, I see. Well, can we stop for a few minutes? I'd like to have D uh, Mac meet my dad. Well, what do you think, Jerry? Well, I don't know. I, I think we'd better go right to the school, Harold. Uh, Captain Gardner said he'd like to meet your dad just as soon as he got in. Oh, okay. You think I'd better go to the school before I go to the cottage, do you, Jerry? Well... Uh, Captain Gardner did say he'd like to see you as soon as possible, Mr. Linworth. Oh, very well. What about Lee? Oh, he just wants to meet your father, Harold. I guess that's all. Uh, don't you think that's it, Jerry? Huh? Oh, sure, yeah, you bet. Uh, that's all. I see. Uh, there's Max's place right there, Dad. Oh, yes? Gee, he's swell to all the kids. You like him. He's scotch. Oh, you think I'll like him because he's scotch or in spite of him? <laughs> 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 well, well, well. There's Fair Oaks Military Academy. Yeah, isn't it swell, Dad? Oh, I should say it is. Of course, I've seen pictures of it in the catalog, but I never realized it was so large. Mm, it is a big school, one of the biggest in the country. And the best. Yes, I know that. I found out all about it before I sent Harold here. Here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, here, let me help you, Mr. Lenwell. Oh, I think I can manage all right. Uh, Harold, you just take that stick and hand it to me when I get out of it. All right, then. There. Oh, I'm sorry to be so much bother. Oh, We'll hope it won't be for long. Well, welcome, Mr. Linwell. Oh, that's Captain Gardner, Dad. Oh, thank you, Captain. Congratulations on coming out of that mess so quickly, sir. Well, thanks, Captain. I'm sort of tickled about it myself. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Well, Harold, I'll bet you're glad to see your father here in Fair Oaks, aren't you? You bet. Uh, I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Harold, do you mind if I take your father away from you for a little while? I'd like to talk with him. Uh, no, sir. Thank you, Harold. Well, boys, you'll just have time to get your rooms and pick your books up and make your fifth period classes. Oh, yep, I guess that's uh, right. Prentice, you can take the station wagon back to the garage. I'll drive Mr. Linwell over to his cottage later. Yes, sir. Well, we'll be seeing you later, I hope, Mr. Linwell. Oh, you bet you will, Lee. And thanks very, very much for coming to the train with Harold. You too, Jerry. Oh, that's okay, sir. And uh, you'd better run along, son. I'll see you later, too. Oh, Harold, uh, I'm going to invite your father to have dinner this evening with Mrs. Gardner and myself. Would you like to join us? Oh, I should say I would, sir. All right, that's fine. You come over to my office after your last period. Yes, sir. Well, goodbye, well, Mr. Lemon. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dad. Come on, Lee. Carol. Yeah, okay, okay. right away. Yeah. You have a fine boy there, Mr. Linwell. Yes, I'm proud of him. And I can't tell you how much Fair Oaks Military Academy has done for him. Now, when I sent him here, I was really somewhat afraid of his health. Before he came here, he'd always been, well, not too well. But he certainly looks the picture of health now, doesn't he? I should say he does. <laughs> we think we have a pretty well-balanced program here at Fair Oaks. Oh, uh, you must have to turn out such fine lads as Jerry Dugan and Lee Phillips. Yes. Well, shall we go inside the hall? Uh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Oh, this is Custis Hall, isn't it? That's right, the administration building. May I help you? Oh, no, thank you. I think I can manage. It's a little slow going just yet, but it won't be long. Of course it won't. <sighs> there. Right in here, Mr. Linwell. Thanks. 
Here's my office right here. Say, this is a fine-looking building. Yes, isn't it? When you're able to get around a little easier, we want you to see the whole school. And I certainly want to, as soon as I can. Uh, sit down, please. <sighs> Thank you. I'm sorry to have taken you away from your boy so soon, Mr. Linwell. Oh, that's all right. Did you want to tell me something about him? His studies or something? No, not about his studies. Harold's a good student. But, uh, well, this is about Harold and also about you. Oh? Mr. Linwell, we may be making something a great deal more out of this than we should, but, well, in view of the entire situation, Major Davis and I thought it well that you should know our suspicions as soon as possible. Suspicions? What sort of suspicions, Captain? About a week ago, Jerry and Lee took a little boat ride in my motorboat across to Woodman's Island, a small island out in the middle of the lake. Yes, I know. Well, there's a small deserted cabin out there, a cabin that hasn't been occupied, at least since Fair Oaks has been here. The boys went out there with an old retired army captain... Or a corporal, Corporal Dent. He lives up the West Shore ways. Oh, I see. Uh, Jerry thought he saw smoke coming from the chimney of the cabin several times. And when the three of them finally arrived there, it was very evident there'd been someone there quite recently. Well, but I... Uh, well, I... I know you can't see just yet what all this has to do with you and Harold. <laughs> no, frankly, I don't. It's just this, Mr. Linwell. In the cabin, the boys and Corporal Dent found some newspapers. Newspapers? Yes, they were newspapers from Wardville, town you passed through on the train about two, 150 miles beyond Fair Oaks. Yes. And they were papers which had contained stories of your crash. Oh. The papers still had the headlines at the top of the front page, but the actual account of your crash had been cut out. I see. Now, uh, of course, Major Davis and I had read the original accounts in the Fair Oaks paper. And we remembered that there was something said about a small white flag near the scene of the crash. And uh, some unexplained packages which had contained photograph film. Yes, that's right. And they haven't been able to explain it yet. Uh, the Major and I knew, too, that it was a new government bomber you were testing. Well, we put two and two together, and we felt that the boy's discovery in that old cabin might somehow affect you and Harold. <laughs> Perhaps, of course, we're absolutely wrong, but we wanted to be safe. Captain Gardner, I... I can't tell you how grateful I am to you and Major Davis for taking these precautions and for asking me to come here. This is a great deal more serious than you can possibly imagine. Really? Yes, I can't tell you any more right now, but this case is certainly not over yet. It's just beginning. I can say to you, though, that it's highly probable that if you hadn't taken the precaution to see that Harold remained within the bounds of the campus during the past week, he might not be here today. Thank you.